You know, when a primary care physician is encountering an individual with post-herpetic neuralgia, the physician needs to not only recognize this problem, um, which may continue three, six, or more months after the acute herpes zoster outbreak, but recognize also that while there is treatment available, um, there is an, likely to be an incomplete response to treatment, so that expectation-wise, it's important to identify the problem, reassure the person with the problem that uh, this is a condition that has come from acute herpes zoster, and also recognize that while there are many treatments available, it's not likely that the pain and other symptoms are going to completely go away. I think that setting a person's expectation for treatment outcome may, be, may have sound at first disappointing, but it also helps to set the stage for success when that less than complete relief is achieved. It's also important for the primary care physician to get to a, a, a comfortable level of, of, of what he or she can do when treating this condition. By that I mean single treatment, be, be it non-medical or medical, the, the use of a single medication, for example, is only likely to get and achieve maybe 30 or so percent relief. It may be necessary to rationally combine therapies, both medical and or non-medical, different classes of medication, opioid, non-opioid in some settings, uh, different classes of medications that may be non-opioid and non-opioid. Uh, and, and, and I think that what's, what that may go beyond the comfort level of the person who's treating the primary care physician. It may not. If it does, it's important not not to um, n not to tell a patient or person with a problem there's nothing more that can be done, but to recognize that uh, I've done what I'm comfortable in doing, and I'd like you to see this colleague of mine who may be able to do more. And I think I think it's important to communicate this game plan so that. To, to the person with the problem, with the patient, so that um, when that person is sent to another physician or another provider, it's not as a failure per se, but as an extension of what's already being done to help the person.